In today's episode, we brought in 10 different rappers and we have to decide what is their best song and what is their worst song. And let us know your guys' thoughts in the comments. And if you guys are new here and want to see more content just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. But let's get started off with Kendrick Lamar. Let's get right into it. What's his best song? Well, I think we've spoken about this on several different occasions. I think that my favorite is going to be Fear, but on a technical component, I would probably go sing about me, I'm Dying of Thirst. And I know there's the whole conversation of what's the best and the technical factor, and Tyler came out and spoke about both of them. But I mean, if I really had to like notch it down to a technical factor and really look at the writing and the like, the sample flip... I'm going with Sing About Me. I think yeah. like you can make more the most arguments for Sing About Me, I'm Dying of Thirst. Like It's just 12 minutes of peak music and the perspective shifting and the fact that it serves as like Kendrick's fork in the road as it like has this crucial moment where he has to decide if he wants to opt out of a life or stay in it. Like This is the moment that defined Kendrick as an artist and as a person, in my opinion based on the writing, which is phenomenal. So so it's not your favorite Kendrick Lamar song, but it's, it's what you not, think it is the but best. It's what I think is the best song that Kendrick has ever put out. Very interesting. Okay, so um, it's worst. What do you got as the worst? The worst? I mean, Kendrick, it's funny because he says that it's Bitch, I'm in the Club, which was from the K-Dot days, and he actually you know, said this on the Big Boy interview, and going into the song, it's actually like a fun club banger, bro. Like I couldn't it's view it. too shabby. It's not that bad. Um, I honestly had no makeup as I had no worst. makeup as well. Um, soulless Hook. Um, makes for a slow burning song that has a half baked story. It's a bit cringe as well. When you go into the song, you feel a bit awkward listening to it as well. You can't necessarily find any groove in the production as well. Um, it's just kind of an outlier too on section eighty where you go through that entire track list and you're like, well, um, this might have been a skipless album if I didn't have this one song there. So no makeup. As also, I feel like if you go back to like a C four mixtape, which was again was under the K dot acronym, you'll find him rapping over a bunch of like C three and Wayne beats. And there's like songs like Phone Home, like he raps over that beat and he sort of forces this Wayne delivery and cadence. And there's a couple of misses also on C4 that were in contention, but ultimately based on Kendrick's catalog, I think No Makeup is the sure answer. But let's go on to Tyler, the creator. And this is an interesting one because I have no idea what the fuck you're going to say is the best song. Well, you already asked me this in a TikTok recording and I said November and I'm going to bring it back in. Really? This. You're sticking by that? I, I thought I'm that was like a quick answer you no, just no, threw no, no, out. No. I'm okay. going to stick by November. I mean... I, I I like I like my music based on my taste and the what I think is the best in his catalog and I think the sample flip and the production is absolutely incredible one of the best in Tyler's catalog. Um, I also think that this is an essential Tyler Creator song just to understand where his perspective was at back in 2017 and him going through all of his fears and anxieties and I always think that that type of record for an artist is super important because it allows you to understand the artist and the motifs behind his or her's writing and I do feel like that's November for Tyler and I think it's a super underrated pick as well i never really see this answer all over the place and i've always really connected to this song on an emotional level i do feel like the profound writing and just the way that he was also writing a couple of flows like the flow switches are nasty some of the best rapping performances ever in his catalog so i went with november off of flower it's a boy. great pick it's definitely one of the best off of flower boy um but i had to go with gone gone thank you which is okay that's very um, interesting absolutely yeah and i think it's uh it's not everyone's favorite off of igor but i'm just a sucker for the two-part songs and i just love this song because it really showcases Tyler's duality. Well, let me ask you something. Yeah. Were you considering this or a 9-11 Mr. Lonely? Because that was another song that I had in contention I was actually, this. New Magic Wand was like my second runner-up just because that's oh, just wow, like a hurricane of emotions and you're getting Tyler sort of depressing you but also hyping you up. But to go back to Gone Gone Thank You, um, like I said, it shows his duality. I love the high-pitched singing on Gone Gone where he sort of sounds like a child and he's expressing his emotions of his first love being lost. Then you go on, then you go on to like the second verse and he starts to rap and you get to see that side of Tyler where he's spitting and the songwriting is genius I love the mix of Japanese city pop R&B and hip-hop all fused together in a seamless way and uh yeah it just it shows everything that Tyler could bring to the table and that's opinion. a valid pick that's a W pick okay but his worst I had a couple in contention I had run off of cherry bomb that was one that I was considering but I ultimately went with bitch suck dick featuring Jasper. That was my runner-up. Uh, th that was going to be it for me. And you know what was interesting? I'm like, what the fuck does the Tyler community think about this? Because I went back on Reddit and I was doing some digging and I'm like, well, I'm seeing this answer, but not as much as I'm seeing something like a run, for example. So I go through the two tracks just to refresh myself. And you go through Bitch Suck Dick, and this is probably one of the songs that has aged the poorest um, in Tyler's catalog. You're getting this incredibly um, just obnoxious hook all throughout this song. 
bitch sucked. Dead. But wouldn't and you say that like, about all of Goblin? That that's like the album that's just aged the worst no, for I, Tyler? Because like you do have songs and they're like a Yonkers or a She, for example, that have aged super well in my opinion. So no, I don't agree that it's aged bad, at least in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, I would probably go that as his worst. I would go with Transylvania, which of course is also off a of Goblin, and you see Tyler sort of like morphing into this vampire. Um, the yeah, lyric Transylvania, Transylvania is his worst. Yeah, bro. Like there's just there's no rhythmic intention to Tyler's rapping whatsoever, and it's just he's rapping about like the fuck up shit he would do to women which i get it sometimes in a horrorcore mentality it works but this one just it felt you could definitely uh, hear the relapse inspiration in that yeah track, but like it's sure. just the production's lazily assembled and the lyrics repeat themselves a lot um but i was also considering cherry bomb off a of cherry bomb that why bro, that shit breaks your eardrums bro like it's the most like death grips inspired tyler song and it just it wasn't well put together Okay, let's but keep yeah. going on with this. Let's go on to Jay-Z. And a lot of people do think that he is the GOAT, that he has never done any wrong. And I will be the first to tell you that he has done wrong. And oh, a lot, the, a lot uh, of bad Jay-Z songs. And there are certain bad Jay-Z songs that I was considering for this list. But let's start off with the best. Let's be positive. I went with Lucifer off of the Black Guy. Bro, I, I had Lucifer down like in my notes as I was going through this. I'm like, this is one of the best fucking Kanye beats of all time. Um, but... Tell me why Lucifer, because that's not what I went with. Okay, so I initially, I initially went with Lucifer because I also had Dead Presidents that I was taking into consideration. I do think that Dead Presidents is equally on par with Lucifer as far as my enjoyment goes and also what I think is the best. But I just, I, I love the I, I love the setting that Jay-Z puts you in because he's kind of like contemplating whether he should avenge someone's death or not. And he's taking you through the process of death and all the darkness that that comes with. And he's taking you through the step-by-step -step motion. And I do think it is some of the best writing in Jay-Z's career. It's the best song off one of the best albums of his career. You could say that this is literally the peak of Jay-Z's career from that 2001 to 2003. Also, I think it's easily one of Kanye's best ever productions, the chemistry between Jay uh, between Kanye's yeah. production and between Jay-Z, boom, all time high I went with Lucifer yeah it's this a flawless one. song and it's just funny that it's like it's sort of Jay-Z going into this um, I would say demonic imagery for to some extent but you have like this gospel like sort of sample in the back as well but I ended up going with what I think is like Jay-Z's most extravagant performance as an MC and it had to be Dead Presidents too off Reasonable Doubt yeah. um, I think that in terms of just his beat selection this is the perfect mafioso rap beat not only that but when you're looking at this song um, the double entendres the wordplay shit like my dough flip like Taekwon no I get it I understand Bro, like, it's just it's him rapping his ass off also rapping about how like he's still living off of money he made back in 88 and him having like a business sense before Rockefeller the perspectives are amazing the rhyming is top caliber the inspiration and it's just, you get it's from also the ironic that like Jay-Z's best song features a sample from Nas that, that was always pretty ironic to me too it is pretty cool but yeah. I will say this like it's definitely up there as one of the best New York songs of all time. Do you it's prefer like the original Dead Presidents or the part two that ended up being on the album? I think I listened to the part two more yeah. because it's on DSPs. But regardless, though, I still think they're equally as strong. But his worst. So this one was a hard one to call because I had to go through a lot of material for this. But I know what girls like by Jay-Z featuring Lil' Kim and Puff Daddy is probably what I think is his worst song. Had that in contention. Um, awful Hook, really one of... B well, you go through the song and you're like, how the fuck did Jay-Z make this? Because at least for younger generation, you know, younger generations of hip-hop listeners like you and I, we think that Jay-Z can never do wrong and that he has a, you know, a catalog full of flawless songs. But then you go on to stuff like this and you're like, well, I could just imagine being in the 90s and listening to this and just fucking turning it off right away because getting this little Kim hook, it's just like, ooh. Yeah. And when you look ooh. at like just like that era of like productions from like Diddy and the Hitman, like that was just one of the worst fucking beats from that time. It's so, it's so like plastic and it doesn't move you whatsoever and one thing that I always celebrate Jay-Z for is for having a sick year for production and always bringing in the best cast of producers to make the best quality product but that was an all, at an all-time low here. Not only that but what do you get out of this song? Like Jay-Z's literally just talking about how he would treat a girl like in a super cheesy way for the entire song and it just kind of leaves you wondering like why was this even included on volume one? There's know? a worse song out there by Jay-Z though and what it's do you called Venus versus Mars and yeah you think bro, so going, no going it's not through, that bad going through like a redive it made me realize how many misses there are in the blueprint 3 it's actually pretty crazy to me but this song is one of the worst you have the slow seductive electro beat from Timbaland 
one of his worst ever productions in my opinion and you have this creepy and unsettling delivery by Jay-Z and it consists of his worst hook ever in my opinion where he's rapping shoddy get it in daddy go hard repeatedly throughout the song <laughs> and it also features some of the lamest bars bro of Hove's career there's one bar where he's like took my whole flavor I call her coke zero oh and that's like one of the many like coke bars like coca-cola bars you'll find within the song and you're like well the blueprint bro. three has a lot of mishaps this is awful that's one of them as um, well but it's not that bad no it's, it's awful bro it's absolutely so? unlistenable without yeah, a doubt I, I, maybe it's because i haven't revisited it in a minute, and like but... it's a song about like his girl cheating on him and it's just there's a weird vibe of energy that sort of gets emitted out to you um i but don't Jay-Z's recommend spoken guys. about his music like that and he feels like he never makes good music whenever he tries to force it and that's what he was talking but you, you about know what's interesting with volume one the detriment to a lot of jay-z songs are either usually the production or the hooks like that's usually where you find like the weak points i find anyways let's um, keep going let's keep on, on going with uzi the best song for uzi i mean obviously i was considering 20 mins i was considering sanguine paradise i was considering money mitch but this is one of the only times within this list where I had to go with the artist's biggest song. I have to stand by my take that Exo Tour Life is Uzi's best song. I think that when you're looking at this track, you're getting um, the deepest meanings you'll ever, you know, sort of find out of an Uzi song. No, not only that, but when you're looking at TM88's creative production, you have, of course, the, Mi- the Minecraft door that was sampled, which was genius. And you have, in my opinion, one of the best 808 drum patterns I've ever heard on a trap song. Well, that's very interesting. That's a big claim. But regardless, though, I went with Money Mitch. Yeah, I had a feeling. Yeah, off of the Perfect Love tape. I mean, this is also one of my favorite songs from Uzi as well. Um, And what I like Uzi for is that braggadocious, in-your-face sort of energy that you'll get on a Money Mitch or even a Money Longer, for example, um, like a 7 million. And this was my favorite era for Uzi as well, where everything felt so refreshing and that he was going against the mold of what was coming out in hip-hop and rap. And he was getting a lot of slack for it. But once you started going into songs like Money Mitch, you could not deny the talent that this guy had for rapping. And what's cool is that this is like a three-verse Uzi song. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's produced by Zaytoven with this beautiful fucking piano riff all the way throughout the song and the drums are just heavy they're in your face all the way through um i also love like the little like settings that uzi puts you in so example like girl caught me sleeping took a picture asked for like fifteen thousand. i said run it and i like how he uses the run it bar to be able to lead into the hook and then into the next verse so the writing is extremely clever i think it's the one of the best written uzi songs that he has in his catalog and just the energy is monumental from this track yeah it's a banger it. it's an absolute banger but his worst song i'm not gonna lie to you bro it was actually a challenge for me to find it like was. weak Uzi songs. Even going back to Eternal Take, I'm like, I can't call this. I can't call like You Better Move his worst song. I can't. It's not no, that. It's not bad move enough. Not one of his worst songs. Same for Pop. Like I was debating them, but I'm like, they're not his worst songs. I went songs. Skr, skr off of Love Is Rage 2. I was thinking about that one. That's I not went what I skr, went skr with. Skr off of Why'd you go Skr Skr? I just, it always throws me the fuck off yeah. whenever I'm in Love Is Rage 2. I'm going through the track list and you have the 20 minutes, you have the sauce it ups, you have, neon guts. You have the neon mm. guts, you know, you, you have all of these for real, just these mega bangers. And then you get the skr skr and Uzi's rapping is almost inaudible because I feel like the track is mixed extremely bad and like they're buried behind like these pinball machine sounds. And I just, I don't fuck with it whatsoever. I think it's a hot mess of a song and going back to it. As I was speaking about, I love Love Is Rage 2, and I do like going through the entire track list. Yeah. Man, th- this that song just, a miss yeah, half. a massive miss on the track doubt. list. Um, I had to end up going with It's a Hit, which okay. is off the Red and White EP, so one of the newer Uzi songs, and it's just this super annoying rage song where you're getting this forced, intense energy from Uzi, in my opinion. Um, you have a lot of awkward flows that creep in and creep out of it, and I just remember listening to this in our first reaction and just being absolutely floored by how awful it was. <laughs> um, yeah, bro, it's just uh, no, it's definitely these extending not a good notes, song. and it's just it's really everything falls flat on that song. Everything. That's true. How often do you go back to that EP? I like songs like I know off of there. Like there's yeah. there's a couple of there's uh, good replay uh, bangers. But let's go on now to Mac Miller. And this was tough, bro, to choose his best song. I had to narrow down certain projects because this guy has so many mixtapes and so much shit to go through. So let's start off with my favorite and what I think is the best. I shouldn't say my favorite. The best well, song. I mean, sometimes catalog. your favorite could be the best. You know, that's very true. Is it Perfect Circle? Godspeed. That's, that's what I went. That with is my best. choice as well. Yeah, that's what I went with. That as best. I think it's the most impressive song in his catalog. I mean, um, I, I think that also understanding the way that you know Mac Miller's life played out and you know what ended up happening in 2018, um, just 
further adds context to the song of where he was at emotionally. And I, I go to Mac Miller's music to feel emotional and to be able to like feel vulnerable and to be able to um, help me through dark times. And what's interesting about this is that it's kind of like a full realization and a full eureka moment for Mac Miller where you go to Perfect Circle and... You have that metaphor of like... Are you telling me that you could draw a perfect circle? I'm no, not perfect. because I'm not perfect. I have my flaws. Like exactly. He's sort, of he's sort of trying to like be like, listen, it's not the end of the world. I have a drug habit. It's not as bad as you may, may make and, it and out to be. And then you go on to Godspeed, yeah. and then you hear the whole voicemail from his friend, and like he sounds concerned about him to a certain extent. It's Max's brother, him. actually. It's Max. Oh, I actually never yeah. knew that. The more than you know. So then you go into that second part of the song, and he's just talking about how he's an absolute mess, and how um, he wants to be able to live long for his mother, and how um, he wants to be able to have children. And then you know you, you kind of see what happens two years later, and it's just like, fuck, this is a... Uh, it's an incredible piece of art. Yeah. It really is an incredible piece of art for Mac Miller. So I, and I love I just it how like unsettling the guitar and piano chords are in the first half. It really puts you in like this hallucinatory atmosphere. It feels like you just woke up from a crazy drinking and drug binge, you know, yeah. and you're, it's the next morning and you're kind of just like, oh, fuck everything. And then you know? Godspeed is like, you're in church now and like it's time to face the music. And I just love how it's just this heartbreaking confession um, from Mac, who's getting as honest and vulnerable as he can, like you said, pouring out so many emotions. And honestly, it's a tough listen for me, bro. Like, I, I, go, I go back to this and I'll, and I'll shed a few tears. I'm not going to lie to I you. I have uh, Jet Fuel also in contention as well for myself. Um, I have The Question um, with Lil Wayne off of Macadella. Small That's, Worlds off of uh, Swimming too. for there's me. There's a lot of fantastic Mac Miller songs, but it's worse. So this was another tough one for me just because it's like, Mac Miller has such a tight catalog, especially with the amount of material that he has. It's kind of mind-blowing to think about it. And when you go into maybe the earlier stuff around 2011, you could find some duds here and there because he was still in his frat rap lane. And once you go on to something like Up All Night off of Blue Slide Park back in 2011, you're like, well... I could kind of understand why he took a different direction for Macadelic, and it was because the sound was never going to be able to be sustainable for him, and I don't think that it was going to be able to be like this huge driving factor. And you go into something like Up All Night, and the hook is literally just drink, 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 <laughs> and it just it feels like you're in a high school musical sort of movie with this song as the background. So um, I love Mac Miller, but I do think it's easily one of his worst songs he's ever put out. We have the synergy today, bro. I also chose <laughs> Up All Night as yeah, Mac's worst song. Sure. Um it's interesting because he tried to sort of like make an anthem with this one. It's definitely a song that was designed for you to chant along to, but it just sort of feels like this bland song that was made for the soundtrack of like High School Musical or like a Disney Channel movie. That's the sort of vibe that I get. And uh, yeah, it just at the end of the day, it's this dated 2010s frat rap song that doesn't really have the shelf life. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of songs off of Blue Slide Park that could have been thrown in here as well as obviously stuff from... Um, the Easy Mac days, which I felt like wasn't that that fair to include. He was yeah. still finding himself as an artist, so it's hard because I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. If I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go that far back. You know, that's what I was thinking. So. That's very true. But let's go on to Little Baby because Little Baby actually has an extremely tight catalog. If you take out, it's only me. And I genuinely do think that for the most part, his track record is actually really nice for a rapper of the new generation, someone that came up from that 2017 mark. You look at a lot of different rappers that came up from that era and the projects are always lackluster. And, you know, there's always this sort of like shallow meaning to whatever they have going on. But for his best... I think that I was contemplating... Freestyle is the easy answer. Is that what you went with? I went with my dog. Off of Harder oh, Than Heart. Okay. I went with my dog. I think that that's my... Uh, that's like my number one pick for his best ever song. It's three and a half minutes of him just absolutely ripping through it. Um, and you could see that like... What I like about Lil Baby is the hunger in him. Especially like early on in his career. Like he was really gunning for that type of position. And I do feel like my dog has that sort of energy at a super peak level. I think it's one of the best hooks he's ever laid down as well. So I wanted to include that as a bonus. Yeah. And it's just it's it was so nice to see Lil Baby at that peak form in 2017. Yeah, that 2017, 2018 Lil Baby is probably the best we're gonna see. Also 2020, though. He went on a fucking run that year. But I think freestyle is a great choice. I was stuck between freestyle and 
on another song, but freestyle is such a good answer because like it's one tough verse without a single hook, and it's just about him bossing up. Love that song, but ultimately I had to go with Southside off of Harder Than Ever. Oh, nice pick. Um, I nice absolutely pick. love how dummy he goes on here, bro. You have these quick and frantic flows from Baby, and you just have this amazing braggadocious energy, um, and you have also these clipping 808s, and it creates this pattern that just continues to ramp up as you go throughout the song, and yep. It's also just a really dope, like, coke rap song from Lil Baby. That is That's really true. what it is. And it's also one of his most underrated. It has, like, 60 million streams on Spotify. And I'm like, who the fuck's sleeping on this song, bro? Even intro. I was really considering intro as well. But so it's a short. bit It's a bit too short. But, yeah. I mean, for, like, a little Baby flow, yeah, it's nuts. crazy stuff. Okay, his worst song. I think this is going to be a hot take. But the worst ever Lil Detox? Baby Detox? Hey. I went, I went with, de- no, I, detox. No, detox is went, way I, worse I, I than hey, with, hey, bro. Dude, the whole hey, like hook, bro. I'm sorry, that shit is corny. The verses aren't that horrible. Is, no. The hook is bad. But, no, bro, I'm telling you, do not tell me it's as bad as detox, bro. I'm telling you, oh, it is wrong. worse. You go through, and I listen to detox. I'm like, we gotta go through this period to find truly the worst. <laughs> we gotta struggle to go through I these. Went, listen, I went back to hey, and I'm like, okay, maybe it's just the hook. Let me go back to the verses. Man, I have never seen a lazier little baby performance than hey. It was just this total miss um, for him trying to attempt to get a mega song. They even did like a YouTube shorts campaign with this, which was <laughs> super awkward. And you go through it and he's just mumbling. And you go to Lil Baby for these quick, aggressive raps like you would find on something like a Wants and Needs, for example. And you go to this song and it's just like, what are you doing, dude? Stop this. It's, it's just, it's a big fucking L of a song. I really didn't enjoy it last year. I think that... It's the worst song on his worst album, and it just annoys me, bro. I, think, I, I, I still worst. think Detox is way worse, bro. Like, when you're looking at that song, it sounds like the drums are overpowering him to start off with. It's also the most slurred Lil Baby has ever sounded on a record. Oh, I'm not sure more also, than hate, though. Bro, it sounds like his auto-tune is malfunctioning within the song. Like, it's a trip. Not only that, but he's rapping offbeat the whole time. It, this one is really his laziest performance. An absolute shipwreck of a song. Um, but I was also debating certain songs off of Perfect Timing, which was like his first project on DSPs. A couple of bad ones off of there, too. Also, the World Cup song. Yes. It's pretty awful. Yeah, the World Cup song was pretty awful. I was thinking about it, but I couldn't find it on streaming for some yeah, reason. Yeah, it's only on it, YouTube, I think. Yeah, I think it's only on YouTube, but I ended up going with, hey, but let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Young Thug. And he has a lot of material out, but when I single it out, I said this on TikTok, and I'm happy you guys agreed with me. Harambe is his best oh, song. Absolutely, no. no doubt. The real Young Thug fans will know that this is a masterpiece from Thug a himself. A masterpiece. It, it, Chill, bro, this brother. song is incredible. Oh, no. What are you going to bring in check this time? Who's going to bring a check or a white clef? I thought this we were going to see eye to eye today, bro. So we have, though. But I mean, Harambe is incredible just because. I love the use of his vocals on here. He is using so many different vocal inflections within one track. I think it's easily one of his best performances within his entire career. The production is just incredible. Playing this car in the song, man, like, you just, you feel like you're in the Fast and Furious, bro, and you're about to fucking crash your car. It's just incredible. What a track. Keeps me engaged all the way through, and... I had to put it as best. Good song, overrated though, without a fucking doubt. Um, I don't even know who rates it though. Thug's best stuff? song, yeah, it is underrated. I Wait, guess it's what are you not spoken you're about. You're going for a check. I'm going for a check on this, oh, bro. Like this on. is the <laughs> ultimate. And you know what? You can't say that like it's a song on the level of the London, bro, where it's totally mainstream. Only has like a hundred million streams, and the real Young Thug fans know that this is fucking Thugger's theme song, bro. Like you have this amazing London on the, London on the track production. That just speeds up as you go throughout the song, which is an amazing uh, feeling to just ride out to this track. Not only that, but you're getting this variety of slick flows and cadences from Thugger that he keeps switching up all throughout the song. Not only that, but when you listen to Thug on this track, bro, like you have some of his most memorable one-liners on here. Like I put that crack in my crack, that brack in my brack, like one of his most quotable songs and everyone who is going to put someone on to Thugger, this song is always going to be the first Yeah, but that doesn't them. always equal to the best. I, I don't think... I, I think your explanation is a, a bit jaded. Name me a flaw with check, bro. Name me a flaw with Harambe. I mean, you can... The inflections, get, bro. Like, it's too... 
It's too much. Like, I, 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 I like the Young Thug as a catalyst for vocal experimentation and things of that nature, but sometimes he could sort don't of discredit this song. jump over the barrier I a little bit. Don't even do that. But let's go on to his worst. I have Icy Hot featuring Doja Cat. It's the I, easy answer. I, I think that's probably his worst ever song that I've heard from in his catalog. Yeah. Um, do You Love Me off of Beautiful Thugger Girls. Oof, um, that's his, a sticky one. Yeah, his vocals are shrieking, bro. The yeah, whole but is time. it worse than Doja Cat on this it song? It is. It is. Like, his I'm falsetto sure, is though. bad. It's just. It's just a trash song about sex, bro. Like that that's really what it is. Yeah, he has those raunchy songs within his catalog. Yeah. But I ended up going with Icy Hot. And it's interesting because we didn't have the live album reaction catalog open for this, but I'm sure if we would have uh, reacted to punk live, you would have probably caught a really funny reaction. We were buzzing. It. Yeah. Oh, uh, it was it's a trip of a song, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think we actually you included it as the worst song of the year. Yeah. Of 2021. I, I put it as one of the worst, absolutely. Yeah, and it is. There's really no doubt behind this. And I mean you go through this entire track, you're literally getting fuck all. There's nothing to take out of this song. And um, I, I just don't understand where the chemistry is between Doja Cat and Young Thug. And this, this raunchy, disgusting hook from Doja Cat. It's just, you don't you don't feel like listening to it, man. So I ended up going with that. But let's go on to ASAP Rocky. Someone else with an extremely stacked catalog that I think has a lot of flawless songs. I do think he, he does. has them. I think, but what did you go with the best? It was tough for me because when I think about Rocky, like my favorite sound from Rocky is that Clamps Casino sound where you have this psychedelic feeling and aura to the production and this chopped and screwed influence. So it was really hard for me to not include something like a palace or like a bass um, off of Live Love ASAP, which is just a goaded fucking mixtape. But ultimately, take a guess. Take a guess. Off of that long last ASAP. Um, at long uh, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost was yeah, my pick ultimately Ghost. with this, and I think that I love ASAP Rocky for how, for how ambitious he is. And this this was the first time that we truly truly heard him sort of dedicate a song to a blend of rock and hip hop. You also had perfect chemistry between him and Joe Fox. And in terms of a narrative based song, it's one of Rocky's best because he's sort of rapping about being skeptical about organized religion while also reflecting on his own spirituality and him sort of pleading for his own soul to be saved some of his best rapping ever on a technical level and those melancholic strings from danger mouse always captivated me so i had to choose that bro what i'm on canal street i ended up w going, i went okay. i, ended up I have canal the intro you have track two off the yeah album. i ended up going canal street at his best and this is interesting because the inspiration behind this song was actually the original raekwon song called canal street off of only built for cuban links part two which dropped in 2009 and i just i love world building and setting building that rocky does especially throughout his entire catalog and i think this song is the best at that especially for the way that rocky sort of takes his younger self now like he's looking back at his life of him you know growing up on canal street and being a hustler and you know like just changing all these bootleg merchandise and movies and whatever it is and selling it to people and being on the streets and that sort of grimy feel it's interesting because it feels like ASAP Rocky's like villain origin story to a certain extent and that's why I like this song so much and this song also gave me a bunch of inspiration as well I love the energy throughout this track because um, Rocky is kind of just talking about defying the odds at every single corner that he turns at and that's what I love about the song and the production is absolutely incredible it's kind of like this boom bap inspired production almost to a certain extent but yet there's a height like there's a hint of like psychedelic rock to a certain yeah. extent as well in the back with that guitar so um, I I think Canal Street at his best, but what about his worst? What do you have? I had Wild for the Night off a long live what? ASAP, no. which is the Skrillex song. And listen, bro, I get it. It probably seemed like a good idea in 2013 when you had that whole like dubstep rave sound that was going fucking viral. But listening to this now, you're like, wow, this is so not Rocky. And don't get me wrong. I like when Rocky experiments, but there's a reason why he never went back to this lane, bro. You know what I mean? Like, again, cool for the moment, but... Was not a good lane for Rocky to tap into. I agree. Into. It, aged, it did not age well. Aged but, horribly. But I will not say this. It's not his worst. I ended up going with Call Drops off of testing. That's what I, I think. Prefer, is, I, I would rather listen to Call Drops than Wild for the Night, bro. Be, I just feel like Call Drops is kind of useless to it a is. certain extent. You get like a half verse from ASAP Rocky, and then you get a phoned-in Kodak Black verse from Prison. Like, okay, what is this? You know, I definitely do think it's one of the weakest tracks off of his weakest album. I will say that. And I just never revisit it. And I, when I first listened to it, I'm like... 
it's not a bad song. It's just completely useless in my That's opinion. That's valid. So yeah. I ended up going with Call Drops. But let's go on to French Montana. So this one's very interesting because we never give French his flowers. But and he low-key has bangers. He, he has, has bangers, fucking bangers. And I was surprised to see him on that list of like the top 50 most streamed rappers of all time, bro. Dude, this guy has numbers. This guy has hits. Yeah. Shout out to French Montana. We do not do you justice, sir. But The first thing that you have to do when looking for French Montana's best song is... Skip over every single one. That's a solo song. Like, right away, bro. Actually, I have a solo no, song. No, you don't. Yes, I have a, I have a, I have a solo <laughs> What's song. What's wrong with you? I have a solo song. I'm not sure if it's considered a solo song because there's different versions of this okay, song. What is it? I have Shot Caller. Well, with uh, with Harry Fraud, that's my okay. favorite. Thing, but I think is his best. It's also his debut single as well. Okay. I ended up going with this. I think that it's the best ever production, and it's an iconic production for French Montana. It's an infectious hook as well, and it's exactly what you want from French Montana. You want an all-time club banger. This is the top of the pedestal for his catalog, and it's low-key underrated for him. If 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 he would have built upon this sound even more and gotten better. I could have understood why he would have had maybe a bit more of a decorated career, but this will forever be his best song for me. I had this in lock okay. on contention. Good pick. Yeah, I mean, I was considering stuff like No Shopping with Drake, which is an absolute banger to this day. You went Lockjaw, though? Um, yeah, I was also considering the songs he has with like Max B from the older French Montana days, but ultimately it had to be Lockjaw. Like, when I think of what French Montana represents for the hip-hop game, it's collaborations and creating these party slash club slash street anthems and that's what you get out of lockjaw i love the nature and the structure of the song the way that you have french and kodak going back and forth for the entirety not only that but you have kodak just sliding through the hook of this it feels like this summery trappy that's so infectious that you can't get this enough very of hazy to a certain extent it is and kodak is like He's not forcing anything. He's just mellow and just riding the beat like he's just on a wave, bro. And it's absolutely amazing. French Montana doesn't do anything to throw you off like he sometimes does when he's you know featured with other artists on a song. But ultimately, just the ultimate banger from French. So let's go into the worst song. And there's probably like 100, like 100 or 200 agreeable answers for this. But what did you go with? I went with Handstand off of his new album. They got Admesia with a Sweetie and Doja Cat. Oh, you did that, some digging for this, eh? <laughs> I, I, went, yeah. I went back with this one. Yeah, this is definitely his worst ever song. And I just didn't want to pick, like, the popular, like, horny one. Like, oh, this is his worst piece. People are Which one would worst. that be, you think? I don't know, because it's weird. I, I feel like people discredit his music because of the whole feature thing. Yeah. Like, he has to have a feature, and he's never really the main part to play. But I never really see someone singling out one song, like, let's say, with YB and Amir with a Soul Train situation. With him, I had to go back and really try to find what's the most plastic ob and, and, like, obnoxious, like, attempt at a hit that you could find for French Montana, and this was it. Um, first of all, I'm not a big fan of Sweetie as well. Uh, I yeah. don't find she does much as a rapper, to be quite honest with you. And even looking at Doja Cat again here... The chemistry is completely off. I don't know where any of these three worlds mix and match. And, man, I don't even think anyone's listening to this song, to be quite honest with you, because it was literally at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> I had to dig and dig and dig to go but find poor this track. You, man. I really wow. had to. So this is what I ended up finding. But what did you find as his worst? Worst song, I went with Freaks, which is, you know, about a decade old, features Nicki Minaj. And I think it just pisses me off to, when I hear this because, um, you know, it's a really cheap remake of an old song called Freaks by Lil Vicious and Dougie Fresh, which is an absolute classic in terms of the production of it. And they just took that beat and they made, you know, another attempt at a club hit, which just absolutely falls flat. Cringy lyrics from French and Nicki all the way through. Awful hook um, and just some really awkward accents as well from Nicki. It wasn't that good. But let's move on to the last rapper that we have for today. And I knew this was going to be one of the most interesting ones. We have Logic. What did you choose as his best song? I went with Under Pressure as his best song. What do you have? I went with Gang Related. Um, oh, okay, that was another one in contention. Honestly, for me. there's like an infinite amount of goaded, you know, Logic songs. But at the end of the day, I love this track just because it's condensed. It's three minutes, but he packs his whole upbringing, it feels like, into these three minutes. All the hardships, all the obstacles, um, how tough it was to grow up in a neighborhood that saw as much gang violence as it did and him having to go through trials and tribulations like sell drugs to his father and having a mother that was an alcoholic and also like in terms of logics flows impeccable in terms of the bar work and the double entendres impeccable like he did everything right on this song and i also love the fact that you have this chill beat 
but a haunting sample to contrast it. The, the drums are super quick Execution as well. Execution was engaged. amazing. I went with Under Pressure. I think yeah. that it's his biggest accomplishment as a rapper, to be quite honest with you. And it's considered like Logic's victory lap to a certain extent because you get the first half of the song and um, Logic has finally broken into the mainstream you know, talking about how he's on and how he's worked for this his entire life and you feel the, the triumphant nature of that. And then the production then switches the midway through and you start getting the voicemails and you start starting to realize, oh shit, like now he's diving into a different perspective and now he gives you the pitfalls of the fame but within the exact same banger, which is the high rise of the fame. So I find it a genius concept and it's one of Logic's most personal songs. I also want to maybe consider something like a Nicki for the storytelling Nikki's implement. Cool. But I still do think Under Pressure is better. I think that it's one of the best beats he has in his catalog as well. And I'm such a big fan of like Logic's beat selection over the years. So this was a highlight for me. And even going back to when I was a kid, this is the song that made me fall in love with uh, Logic's music and made me want to go back into the Young Sinatra yeah. series and whatever else he had. But his worst song for me has to be Bobby, bro, off of Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. What do you have? That's a bad one. I ended up going with Lemon Drop off a of supermarket. Oh, yeah, and that's a bad one, Bro, too. this sounds like he's just doing this funny impression of Anthony Kiedis from uh, from Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. It's just the strangest mix of rapping and singing that I've ever heard on a song. Um, and a supermarket is filled with these atrocities of musical compositions. I just, I'm not sure because I know it's a Logic song, but I'm like... Supermarket's kind of hard to judge because like it's an it's a book album to a certain. Who cares? Extent. A Logic eh, song, I, I you know? know. I know. Lemon Drop could definitely be considered, but Bobby Man, like going back to this album was just weird because Logic was forcing all kinds of shit on you, like he was trying to convince you that like you know he came from a certain ethnic group and that you know he was playing within the realms of certain things, and it was just like okay, you know, we get it. Like, it's been, like, three albums now that you get here, and, like, Bobby is really the pinnacle of that to where now, like, you're fucking annoyed and you don't want to dive back into the rest of his catalog for a very long time. And you're also getting some weird bars on here about how, like, you know, he's, uh, he's like, black from the waist down and stuff like that, and it's just like, whoa, bro. Like Really hey, weird lyrics. Yeah, eh? just really weird lyrics. Yeah. And you're going through it, and you're like, man, listen, like, I, I get it, you know? I, I think it's... Maybe he was it, trolling it, and fucking around. Like, it could be. That's the vibe I get sometimes listening to some of those songs off of Confessions, yeah, you But know? that's what I'm saying, though. It's just so awkward, and you're yeah. there, and you're like, this is the same guy that made Under Pressure? Okay, I guess so. <laughs> so, I mean, listen, I think that's going to wrap up our list for today, guys. So let us know where we got it right. Let us know where we got it wrong. And guys, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel. And like Lou said at the beginning of this episode, if you guys are new to NFR Podcast, smash that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching this, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.